Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to kick off our kitchen cabinetry. So obviously we've done a lot of research on YouTube on how other people are building their cabinetry um, within their van and what we've decided is that we're going to want, we're going to build a two inch by two inch piece of pine structure um, underneath all of our cabinetry that's going to act as a toe kick so then our big cabinetry that Katie's about to talk about is going to rest on top of that. Yeah so our kitchen cabinets themselves we're going to use half inch uh, birch plywood and then that's going to sit on top of our two by two base structure and we think that's going to give us a nice support and really strong foundation so that these cabinets stay put. Strong. So let's get into it. The first step in the process was to cut all of our two by twos into the correct size for the foundational structure. Our plan for the kitchen is to have a continuous countertop from where the bed will be all the way into about 13 inches into the doorway. So a pretty long galley kitchen. The dimensions of that when all is said and done will be approximately 71 inches by 21 inches. And so this structure is about three quarters of that. And what we're building now is not the part that's gonna go over the wheel well. Once all of the pieces of lumber were cut, we used our Craig pocket hole jig to drill in pocket holes on all of the pieces. And then we got into the gluing and screwing and construction of the base skeleton. And this was relatively straightforward. We put the glue on, we clamped it, and then we screwed it. The clamps played a really big role in making sure that we were at 90 and keeping everything on the same levels because we are going to cover this with a piece of plywood. So all these pieces needed to line up perfectly and it ended up working really well. Highly recommend utilizing clamps. And once that skeleton piece was put together, we brought it into the van to check the fit. It was important that we didn't move forward until we knew that it was absolutely a perfect fit, and it was. Knowing that it fit, we could move forward. So the next step was to cut the piece that's going to sit on top of the skeleton structure. Now we traced it to make sure that it lined up perfectly. And then I also traced out all of the little ribs in there because when we put this on top, we'll be able to see exactly where the screws can go without any guesswork. And it was really a simple step to do now that really saved us some time as we continued the building process. So we used our Craig AccuCut to get us our straight lines. And then we brought it over to the table where I utilized the jigsaw to cut some of the other fine lines that the AccuCut was a little too large to tackle. Once that top piece of plywood was cut and fit perfectly onto the skeleton, we glued and clamped it down and then countersunk all of our screws into it to hold it together. With the base structure complete, we moved on to the framing of the actual cabinetry. So like we said previously, we are using half inch birch plywood and we utilized our Craig AccuCut again to cut our long strips, which will be the siding to all of this cabinetry. We thought that to make the pieces of wood consistently the same width, if we cut one long strip and then divided that into thirds, it would make for three perfectly even width pieces of plywood that would work well for our side walls for our kitchen cabinetry. We used our square in combination with the AccuCut to cut these three pieces to the exact same size. And then we used the square on the larger piece to cut out the fourth sidewall. Mm -hmm. 
our isotherm cruise 130 refrigerator will be sitting in this structure so we needed to cut out vents so we hopped on the jigsaw and cut out a few vents and a few notches that we'll be able to run piping and wires behind now that we have all of the elements of our structure we brought it back into the van and started to build up so the first thing we did was line it up with the wheel well and put in our first sidewall because the cruise 130 refrigerator requires quite a bit of venting we're deciding to elevate it up with two two by fours this will allow airflow underneath behind and out the side vent once we had the first wall up and the floor two by fours put in to elevate the refrigerator we brought the refrigerator in because we need to sandwich it between these two pieces of plywood for a tight fit and because of the way the refrigerator mounts which comes later so we put the fridge in we measured where it needs to go to be a perfect sandwich, and then we glued and screwed and rechecked before bringing the whole structure back into the garage to put up the rest of the walls. Once all the walls were up and we could take a better look at the cabinet itself, we decided to cut a few more uh, notches out the back for more room for running the piping and the wires that will come later in the build. With all of the side pieces up, we moved on to the front face. This front face is what you would see if you open the van door, so it face, faces out of the slider door. And here we opted to utilize not only the half inch plywood as more of a facade, but also more of our two by two lumber. Because this is gonna be at the corner where people will enter into the van, we wanted to have a little bit more structural integrity with the two by twos, because if you were to put your hand on to climb into the van, we wanted to make sure that it was strong enough to hold. And we weren't super confident that just half inch ply would suffice. So we used the two by twos, we screwed our piece of plywood onto the front, and then we screwed that whole thing into the base of the cabinet structure. And the final element of this cabinet was to add a crossbeam on the front. This way we have somewhere where the doors can close onto, but also provide some support for the butcher block countertop that we're going to sit on top of this. With everything assembled, it was time to put in a little wood filler where all the screws are. So it is the, <laughs> is the end of the day. We've been active for 15 hours, but we finished our kitchen cabinetry. It's not finished, but it's close. Well, kind of. We have to paint it. The construction it. of it. And the face of it. And put the cat on the top. Okay, we're not done. But while we're in the garage working, look what happened. Four inches of snow. <laughs> that four inches of snow turned into 12 inches of snow, which meant a cold day in the garage the next day, where we sanded the entire cabinet, added a layer of Kills Mold and Mildew Primer, and then painted the whole thing with our cracked pepper gray paint. Once it finally dried, we brought it into the van to do another test fit. After discussing a few things like how we are going to mount the refrigerator, we test fit the fridge one more time before screwing the whole cabinet into the floor using our three inch long wood screws. and then we slid the fridge back into place. Since there's not a lot of information online on how to install an Isotherm 130, let's jump into mounting it. So there are four of these white caps um, that you need to pop off and we use our automotive uh, trim, tool. trim tool and it's really easy to do. So if you wanna watch, let me just shove it in. Just give it a nice little bleep to come straight off. Bleep. Straight off. Through these holes, you would screw directly into the side panel wood of the cabinetry frame, 
we opted to drill and then use bolts in all four of these. It felt like a more secure attachment considering we only used half inch plywood and this refrigerator is pretty heavy. So we went ahead and drilled out, added some bolts, and that's how we attached it. The basic structure of the cabinet is complete. We don't have doors and we don't have the countertop on it. So there is more to come with this, but for now we're happy with how this turned out and we hope you enjoyed watching our little video. If you want to see how the van continues to be built out, follow along. Thanks for watching.